Our first reading is taken from Psalm 145, verse 10 to 13. Psalm 145, 10 to 13. I'm reading from the New International Version. Let us hear the word of God. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The word of God. Our second reading will be taken from Revelation 5, verse 9 to 14. Revelation 5, 9 to 14. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Shall we hear the word of the Lord? And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. First of all, I would like to thank the leaders of the Music Creative and Worship Arts Ministry for this opportunity to bring God's word to you. I also would like to thank the pastors and council of elders for granting us this opportunity to lead the congregation in praise and worship. It's a real opportunity. Just so you know, last year I was supposed to preach, but rather I struck a deal with Franklin. I told him, boss, I beg you, preach. That was last year. Next year, I will preach. And here we are today. <laughs> Time flies. Interestingly, I think earlier on in the year, Reverend Bwama was preaching and he made mention about, you know, a choir master preaching. And I mean, I, I wasn't amused. I, I, I just knew that uh, this, this, this is, flesh and blood did not reveal this to him. <laughs> it was coming, so, yeah. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for this opportunity to hear from you. Lord, we pray that you will speak through me to your people as we contemplate your eternal nature and may we be filled with gratitude for all that you do and for all that you will be doing for us thank you in the mighty name of Jesus amen so my personal
scrutineers or advisors say that I usually swallow my words. So I'll take my time so that I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a last verse that I want to read to add to um, this. This was chosen by the leaders, so I'll just read it. And it's from Revelation. Revelation 1, 4 to 8. It says, John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before the, his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. I'll just jump to verse 8. It says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Amen. I'm going to mention a few words and... We'll take it from there. The first word is limit. For my students, a lot of things may come to your mind when we talk about limit. Time. Expiry date. All these connote finiteness. We are reminded daily that everything has a beginning and an end. And I'll give a few examples. Graduating from kindergarten to class one. Or graduating from college. Or even obituaries. We are always reminded that everything has a beginning and an end. I remember when I was in class three, I told a friend that by the time we get to JSS, Jesus would have come. I honestly could not see beyond JSS. In fact, when I was in class, I couldn't see beyond JSS 3. I just couldn't see beyond that. But here we are today. Perhaps this is why it is difficult for us to understand or comprehend a God who is eternal. Who has no beginning and no end. Because in this world, we are limited. There's a limit So I want to treat this topic in three short parts. This is an exhortation. We want to look at the eternal God and what the Bible says about God being eternal as seen in his attributes. And this segues into the second part. We are still talking about the eternal God, but this time we talk about what it means to us. And then finally, we'll talk about our response to all this. So first of all, I want to talk about the eternal kingdom and dominion of our Lord. So turn your Bibles to Psalm 145, verse 10 to 13. I read from the NIV. It says, All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know that your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. You can see from the verse that God rules forever in power and in might. His kingdom never ends. This is not like our world where we have political instability, coups and attempted coups. He rules and reigns forever never to be replaced or overthrown. And if this God is for us, who can be against us? We can also see this in the prophecy of Isaiah about Jesus. So let's go to Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. I'll take it from the NLT. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders and you'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. Again, in this verse, we see the eternal nature and permanence of God. I read the verse 7 again. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The Lord's kingdom is forever. He rules and reigns forever. I also want to talk about he being our eternal rock, the one we can lean on. From Psalm 145, verse 13 to 14, it says, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen, I'm adding verse 14, and lifts those bent beneath their loads. In Isaiah 26, verse 4, it says that trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the eternal rock. When we say someone is trustworthy, it also means that they are dependable, they are reliable, we can lean on them. The Isaiah verse says that trust in the Lord forever. The Psalm 145 says that the Lord always keeps his promises. In Isaiah, we are being told to trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself. I could not help but ask, who else? It says, the Lord himself. I read some commentaries and the Lord that was put there in the original Hebrew language is Yahweh. And our pastors have done a good job of explaining to us the meaning of Yahweh and the weight it carries whenever it is used. So I won't attempt that today. <laughs> when someone wants to emphasize the importance of something, they sometimes use repetition. So for example, in the King James, you see, verily, verily, I say unto you. Or in local parlance, you say, mechamechrel. Here, God is telling us that he himself is our rock eternal. He's not the one you can just lean on today. But he is eternal. So forever we can lean on this God. Hallelujah. Also, the passage is trying to let you know who you are trusting in or who you are leaning on. This is the Lord himself. As they say, the self-existing self Sufficient God. Amen. I also want to talk about eternal life. We've been looking through the first letter of John in the first half of the year, so I couldn't help but to bring this up. In first John five, eleven to thirteen, it says this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. John 17 verse 3 says that now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. Jesus, or God, is our very life. And this life is eternal. This is why in the Garden of Eden, God said that if you eat the fruit, you will die because life without God is actually death. And 1 John 1 verse 2 says that the life appeared and we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you 
the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. Christ is life itself. And if we trust in him, he gives us the right to become children of God. And that is the life we carry, the life of Christ himself. So just to recap, we've talked about the fact that God's kingdom is everlasting. He's our eternal rock that we can lean on. And he's our eternal life itself. There's a popular song that says, Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. And the refrain is taken from Psalm 136. His love endures forever. That's what I want to talk about next. The love of God endures forever. So from Revelation 1 verse 5 from the NIV, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Revelation 5 verse 9 says that, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. These two verses talk about how Jesus purchased us with his blood. We know that from John 3, 16, because of God's love for us, he gave us his son to purchase us back to God. And this love, like Jesus himself, lasts forever. I just want you to think about that. His love endures forever. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says that the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. One of the things that came to mind again when I was preparing for this was that scriptures speak for themselves. I also read from Lamentations 3, 22 to 24. It says, because of the Lord's great love for us, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Hallelujah. And he does not grant us mercies that, that endures. But his mercies are new every day. He says that his compassions never fail. Or in other versions, other versions, his mercies never end. And the mercies are also new every morning. New grace to face each day. Amen. And then when you go to Romans 8, 35 to 36, and then 38 to 39, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And in verse 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So this brings me to the end of the first part. I just wanted to list out some attributes of God as our eternal Father. Now this is where we bring it home. What does it mean to us? And I had a number of things written down, but um, as I said, my, my personal scrutineer edited some of them. So I'll just keep it brief and short. I want to talk about the eternal salvation we have in God. A benefit of having an eternal God. The eternal salvation that we have 
in God, the complete salvation we have in God. We're just talking about the love of God and how that love sent him to the cross or sent Jesus to the cross to purchase our salvation. Let's know that salvation, the salvation that we have in God is complete. We do not need any top-ups. Sometimes in our professional careers, we take some courses so that we either unlearn some things that are now old or archaic or become experts in certain fields. But our salvation is not like that. You don't need God plus Buddha plus something else to be complete. Faith in Jesus is enough. I read from John 1 verse 12. It says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So first of all, if you believe in Christ, you become a child of God. I'm trying to build a point here. Last week, Reverend Femi talked about the grace of God which has appeared to all men. And the grace that saved us is also teaching us. So we read in Titus 2, 11 to 12, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. God's love sent Jesus to the cross to save us. And the grace he offers does not only save us, but is also teaching us. So he hasn't left us. It's not like after salvation, okay, now make it to heaven by yourself. He is with us. Philippians 1 verse 6 says that, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So he's walking with us in, in, in the salvation process. Please, can you project Hebrews 7.27 from the Amplified? I want us to read it together. I really like this verse. So if you have Hebrews 7.25 from the Amplified, I want us to read it together. If not, okay, yeah. Okay, so let's read. Ready, go. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, and for all time, those who come to God through him. Since he is always living to make petition to God and intercede with him, and intervene for them. Hallelujah. He's able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives. He always lives. He's alive. Amen. Just so that you, you understand better what I'm trying to say. When you put your trust in anyone apart from God himself, you are not going to get this sort of companionship. When you begin your journey with any other God, you are not going to have this companionship where they stay with you. And this one is saying that he's able to save completely those who come to God through him. So imagine this. You've been selected to represent your country. Or let me say, selected to represent Ghana at a conference in Australia. And due to the sensitivity of the trip, you are supposed to fly straight from Ghana to Australia. I'll just give you uh, a little bit of information. So it's about 12,817 kilometers to Australia from Ghana. Accra to Boku is 678 kilometers. So if you go to Boku by road 18 times, that is how long it will take you to get to Australia. By plane, it's approximately 22 hours, 40 minutes. Yeah, so um, you can see the map. I hope it's clear. I did geography in school, so yeah. You can see, so I, I plotted this from Ghana to Australia. So imagine you're on the plane. I said you are representing the country 
on a conference. Imagine you're on the plane. And when you get to the middle of the Indian Ocean, where you just see there's no land, all you see is water. Imagine the captain comes on the intercom and says, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Hope you've had a smooth flight so far. I would like to let you know that this plane is fitted with only two parachutes. And my co-pilot and I intend to use it shortly. We are having some troubles. Um, so we've come to the end of our part of this journey. We wish you good luck and safe landing. Godspeed. Then they take the parachutes and they jump off the plane. This is exactly what happens when you trust in anyone else but God. In the middle of the ocean, they are out. And as they said, safe landing. That's why the verse in Hebrews 7 means a lot to me because he's able to save completely. He will not leave you. He will not leave you. He's with you because he always lives to make intercession for you. And, and, and this is what it means for us to have an eternal God. He lives to intercede for us. And he's able to save completely. Philippians 1.6 says that he who began a good work will surely bring it to completion. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. Amen. There's a painting by a man called Thomas Blackshear. Projection, if you have the painting, you can just keep it up there. I think it would be good if it comes here. If you're able to project it. I saw this um, on the album of uh, a band called Planet Shakers. And the image stuck with me. You can see... Jesus holding a man, or in fact, yes, holding a man. His legs have given way, so Jesus is actually keeping him upright. And the man has in his hands a wooden hammer and a nail. This is love. Our sins drove Jesus to the cross, and he's the one upholding us. I would like to talk about the second thing, what it means for us to have an eternal God. And that he has plans for us that fit into his grand eternal plan. He has plans for us that fit into his grand eternal plan. Psalm 145 verse 13, as we read, says, The Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and faithful in all his he does. We know this one, Romans 8, 28. We are assured and know that God, I'm reading from the Amplified, being in partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good. And for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. One of the benefits of having an eternal God is that his plans fit into his grand agenda. He's seen the end. We know this one, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Mind you, we read earlier that he is trustworthy in all his, his promises. And this verse is telling us that for I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Or another version says, to give you a hope and a future. As I said, God has seen the end from the beginning. So if he says that I know the plans I have for you, you can trust him. Since the Lord works out all things and fits them into a plan for good, whenever we face bad times, 
we should have hope. He lives forever, so he will not leave us to face the difficult times alone. Let me just illustrate this um, and be a bit personal. Most of you know that me and I have twin boys. By God's grace, they turned five last month. I was supposed to give a testimony December 2019, but it didn't happen. But um, when they were born, like twins, they were rather small. They came out early, um, 34 weeks. Fifi was 2.0 kg and Yofi was 1.5 kg. Very small. I could just carry them. They would just fit this side of my hand. And they were put in the neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU. And when they came out, they were not doing well. They got infections, so they could not keep any food down. And also, Mira couldn't, didn't have enough breast milk for them. So when you give them pre nan nan, everything would just come out. So they were just getting worse. And all we could do was to pray and petition God and, you know, just ask God to save these boys. But as time went on, we're not seeing any improvements. When you go to the hospital, they tell you in the night they vomited. They've not been able to, you know, take in anything. So they were feeding them intravenously. So it was a time of confusion for us, you know, What's going on? What's going on? So one night, I went to the lab just opposite Kolegu to pick up some results. And there were two songs while playing. One was called Another in the Fire by Hillsong United. If you are going through any challenge, please listen to that song. It's called Another in the Fire. Like, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego was trying to sort of capture that, that God is with you in the fire. And the part that got to me, at the end of it, the singer was saying that even if God does not do it, I will still bless his name. And the second song was called Song of Ascents or Highlands. And he had a, a phrase that said, whenever I walk through the valley of death. I'll sing through the shadow my song of ascent. Basically the same thing. And at that time, it just dawned on me that God was asking me to do one thing, which was to surrender the boys to him. And I was asking God, what, what plan is this? Like, how is this all fitting? I don't know. Are we going to lose them? What's going to happen? But in tears... I just said, Lord, whatever you want to do with these boys, have your way. I was broken, but what it did was to open my eyes to see what God had in store. Sometimes when we are having issues, we just focus on the issue, the issue, the issue. But God has a grand agenda, and your issue is just a slot in the grand agenda. So sometimes when we narrow ourselves to just the issue, we miss God's big agenda. When we were in the hospital, as I said, the boys could not take in anything. So all the food that we had, Mira would just tell me that, oh, a mother needed pre nan and she gave it out. So we were just giving out all the things that we bought for the boys, for people who needed it. And they were needy people. Our boys were just being fed intravenously, so all the nan and pre nan was just there. We were giving, out, giving it out to hungry babies. Their mothers could also not produce enough breast milk, and they could not afford to buy some of these items. So we were just giving it out, giving it out. One time I was in the room, and a mother who had given birth, the husband was nowhere to be found or the husband had not come to the hospital, no family member was around, and this lady was 
contemplating going to circle to carry goods to get enough money to be admitted into the Nico. And my heart was broken. And then God pointed out that in this, your time of turbulence and turmoil, these are some of the things that I want you to do for me. So I remember giving the money to Mira to give to the lady so that she could be admitted into the Nico. There were other opportunities for us to serve others and to bless others and to fulfill God's plan for us at Kolebu at that time. And if we were just focused on our boys, our boys, our boys, we would have missed that. That's why I'm saying that his eternal plan for us is good. And we need to align ourselves to that. Amen. So we'll move to our third part. Just to recap, our second part, we talked about the fact that we have eternal salvation in him. He's not going to leave us like those pilots. Jump off. And his plans fit into his grand agenda for us so we can trust him. So now we look at our response. What should be our response to the fact that we serve an eternal God? Well, today is praise service, so I guess the first one is obvious. Praise him. Because he's worthy of it. He's worthy of our worship. Revelation 5, 9 to 10 says that, And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. He has purchased us from sin, death and damnation. He has brought us into the kingdom to serve as priests and we will reign one day. What a glorious future we have. If the angels are forever praising the Lord, how much more we The second thing that I would like to also submit, apart from praising God because he is eternal, is to surrender. Surrender. We come to God and accept him as our savior. But sometimes we find it difficult to make him Lord of all. What is it that is holding you back from surrendering completely to God? Your marriage, your children, finances, what is it? Or you are afraid of what God will turn you into. When I was younger, I felt that if I committed to God totally, I would have to become a pastor. That's what I thought. That if I commit to God fully, dear, I, I, I will become a pastor. And at that time, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Now, it's not a bad idea, but... Please, I beg you know that. I'm just saying that <laughs> I don't have... It's, it's not a bad idea to be a pastor. Yeah. We have read that his plans for us are good and not for evil. And that he loves us very much. Why will such a God who has made us uniquely turn us into something we will hate? God is good. Why will such a God turn us into something that we will hate. He loves us and he has plans that are good. So today, as I end this sermon, I just want you to consider it. I have a message for anyone who is hurting and grieving. 
I want to consider that you turn your eyes to Jesus. A lot of times we just focus on the pain, the hurt. And as I told you, that was what I was doing when the boys were born. But God wanted me to just look at him. And I didn't finish the story because of time. But as we did that, the boys got better. But at that point, God was teaching me that even if he doesn't, he wants me to focus on him. Because the agenda that he has for me is big. And whatever thing that I'm going through at the moment is just a slot, a dot in the grand agenda. So we are going to enter into a short time of worship and I want you to focus on our God. Focus on Jesus. Usually when we are worshiping, our thoughts are on the music, what is going on. But let your focus be on Jesus. Be amazed at his glory. Ask him to reveal himself to you if you do not know him.
As I said, it's not about the songs that we are singing. He is worthy. If you take out the song, he is still worthy. We are about to sing a number of songs. If you know them or not, keep the focus on Jesus. Seated on the throne, the one who will not leave you. He will start with you, journey with you, and end with you. Bless the name of the Lord. Singing about eternity. Picture yourself before the throne of God. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. You are. I can wait for eternity. Join the song they already singing Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Just to bow down before your throne See your face, I'll cry out Because your holy, holy, holy are you for us it's very simple. It says, Jesus, King of Kings. Hallelujah. Jesus, Majesty. Let's sing again. I can't wait. I can wait for eternity. Join the song they already singing. Oh, oh, holy are you, Lord. Just to bow down, just to bow down before your throne. we see the face of the Lord. For he is holy. Sing Jesus is the King of all kings. Let's declare it. Jesus, Lift your voice, church. Jesus is the King of kings. Imagine yourself standing, standing with those who have heard, proclaiming forever that Jesus is faithful, he did not leave you. Faithful, faithful, faithful And when we stand before him, what can we give him but endless praise? Say you are
worthy, worthy Lord, another glimpse of glory. We sing once more, worthy, worthy, worthy Lord, forever and ever. We sing worthy, 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 worthy. Lord, and when we see Him, we we'll sing once more like the angels. Worthy, 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 worthy Lord, forever and ever. We sing worthy Lord, worthy, worthy Lord, and of the winds of glory. We sing in worthy, worthy, worthy Lord. We sing worthy yes, the Lord. our voice to Jesus, the Lamb of God who is worthy. As I said, you may not feel like it. Just open your mouth and say, Lord God, you are worthy, despite everything that I'm going through. Be exalted, O oh God, even in my pain. Be exalted, God. Set up, God. You are worthy, Lord. Father, he puts you with a 
Christ. Lift your voice to Jesus. continue to praise the Lord through it all we'll continue to praise the Lord to exalt his name for in his presence we are changed in his presence we are changed we are restored we are healed we don't want this to be a Sunday experience or a praise service experience continue to bless the name of the Lord in every situation we bless the name of the Lord Rejoice in the Lord, as the verse says, always, always. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. you joining our service today please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the logo and don't forget to like and share see you next week god bless you